Welcome back to Philosophy of the Barber. This week's guest is Hannah Coleman, owner of Union Barber Company in Merrimack, New Hampshire. Uh, Hannah has been a cosmetologist licensed for eight years and a master barber for the last five years. Welcome, Hannah. Hello. You're going to have to speak a little bit louder for me. Hello. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> All right. So this is our first conversation ever. We've never met before. No. So I got to start out with the question I always start out with, which is uh, how did you find yourself coming into the world of hair? I have, I feel like I have the most boring answer for that. I just always wanted to do it. Well, like always, like since you were three, you had Barbie dolls and you're no, like, I love hair. Yeah, it's not that aggressive. But like <laughs> I, um, I was friends, one of my, one of my friend's girlfriends was going to the Manchester School of Technology for cosmetology and they start their courses for junior and seniors. So you go there for, I think it was like an hour and a half to two hours a day. And then you would just do whatever. I mean, they didn't go like super aggressive into it, but it got your feet wet. It was like an introduction course? Yeah. Like you, you did stuff, but it was like nowhere near actually like going and doing like the programs at like Empire and Well, like Michaels I, rem- I remember like when I was in elementary school, it was like a field trip we could like have our parents sign up for us yep. where we would go and we'd be able to get our hair done, like just styled yeah. and then like nails painted or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and that was the high school program. So it was yeah. something similar to that where it's like just like introduction, yeah. not necessarily cutting or I did, doing services. I did one haircut, maybe two. And then I did like eyebrow waxing. But I'd say that was like, the, that was it. That was the most aggressive. <laughs> Well, and there's only, you got two hours a day, and yeah, you year. do it for, what, a semester, maybe two? That's all year. All year? Maybe all year, yeah. So it's, it's not a lot of yeah, hours. Yeah, you're only dying so deep. My instructor was, like, crazy as the day's long. Like, she was, <laughs> she was a character. So she would talk most of the time. But, but I did, like, you know, I learned some stuff, and it helped me to realize that I was interested in it. So then from there on out, I took the summer off, and then I went right into Empire in September, and started there and actually it, what I learned in those two years got me through my first portion like first couple months there like I was like cool I already know this stuff and then um graduated there in 2012 and got my license and was pretty much right into a salon after that so did you like hop into a salon situation where you were like employee and getting trained up or did you go into like a full-fledged salon that had booth renters around and all sorts of stuff? So I actually can't remember because my first salon I worked in for like a month, I got fired so fast. <laughs> so fast. Do we want to <laughs> say why? <laughs> I was very overly confident. <laughs> Uh-huh. And excited, I should say, overly excited. Somebody was enthusiastic. Very. <laughs> and I think I needed someone. And I'm not going to like, I mean, I definitely should have reeled it back in. But I think also, like, as a good boss, you kind of need to see that stuff and be like, whoa, whoa, hey, you just got out of school. Like, don't do this stuff. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I didn't I didn't last there very long. And then, I, and then I got a job at a corporate salon where I was there for... A couple, a couple years. I was only going to be there for like a year, and then I ended up being there for four years. And I kind of hit this point where I was like, do I go work full service? Because I don't want to be here forever. Like, this is a good stepping stone, but I got to, like, I got to go. Uh, or do I go into barbering? Because I think since, like, my first year of cosmetology, I was it was like barbering was kind of always there. I was always kind of jiving more with my male clientele and when guys would come in with like oh I want to change my haircut I got way more excited than when women did on average I shouldn't say like because I have like a couple female clients now but in general like I I get along better with guys really I'd like a very masculine female my boyfriend tells me (laughs) (laughs) I, I feel like those who are independent yeah women tend to jive a little bit easier with males yeah uh more than like the female collective yeah and and that kind of reflects with us in our friendships too like do you have a group of girlfriends i do but they're all super weird like they're not (laughs) your like they're not your standard girl group see i I keep mine compartmentalized like yeah i realized this during my um my wedding tea party was like, none of you know each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. I run that gambit, too, though. I do. 
I had a, we had, a, we had uh, my boyfriend and I had like joint grand opening parties for when we opened our shops and I had a bunch of people like at a bar and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be a host because none of you know yeah. each other. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I chose barbering, obviously, and I'm really glad I did. I don't think I could work in a full service salon. Like, I think if I were to, and I think about it all the time, I'm like, would I ever go back to a salon? I'm like, maybe if I want to do color, I do like one day a week and it's like only things I want to do. Like only fun stuff. It's like, oh, you want the highlights? No, thank you. Hey, welcome to what I'm doing. (laughs) Literally, I just made myself a situation where I'm like, I want to personally do whatever I'm licensed to do. Yeah. But like, I'm not going to do you know, copper highlights or, you know, a particular shade of blonde. Yeah, that's um, so boring. I do, I do fashion me. vivid color because that's super fun and artistic. And yeah. most people who, like, want that do not have a specific vision in mind. So yep. you don't have this, like, pinpointed target to achieve. You have a general aesthetic to achieve, which gives you more freedom of artistic uh, expression. And then the gray coverage because it's freaking easy. On guys, gray coverage is the easiest. I did a lot of that back when I was working at the <laughs> salon. Yeah. So I, I offer it as something that's very approachable to a clientele that doesn't want to enter a salon full of potpourri and lavender. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it is. It's a very different environment. It really is. I um, I find that you – and it's. I think it's for both parties too. Like these women that go into salons, like they're – you're a little more vulnerable, right, because you are just got that – middle part slick wet hair to your forehead and then this guy's you know walking by you and you're like oh god (laughs) well and like that's why i don't necessarily like uh crap on the the general viewpoint of the public where it's like guys go to barbers girls go to salons because like there is a purpose to that for some individuals that kind of need that that security of an atmosphere yeah so that they can you know be vulnerable and and change things up without feeling judged by the people that they're trying to impress if that's what they're there for yeah but then at the same time there's that like you need to open the doors to both sides of the house so that you can like freely go either way yeah and that's one of the things i've noticed and that I love about people that cross over and have both licenses is that you bring a full uh, set of tools with you Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, if somebody who's very into the barber atmosphere is now curious about something that isn't typically offered in a barber shop, then you're able to be like, yeah, you know what? I can totally like educate you on that and, you know, make it more approachable. Yeah. And vice versa, where I've had uh, salon owners come in and they've incorporated barbering into their salon because that's where the market's headed. Yeah. Like, oh. ultimately, the, the further we go, the more it's like, no, I want it all. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I like, um, I don't think anybody should limit themselves. I, I like the way that um, Blank Canvas has done it. I don't know if yep. you've been in there. They're, they're next week. Are they? Yeah. Well, you already had Stephanie on, right? Yes, but oh, they okay. air next week. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I like, I think that's really cool how they did that and stuff like that. But I, I'll definitely offer anything. I have a, got a client who his daughter comes to me. She's got wicked long hair. Actually, I just cut off like a foot of it, but she had wicked long hair and he's just like, I don't know where to bring her. I'm like, hi, I can do that for you. Wicked hair. <laughs> yeah. And I don't look at it as like a male female thing anymore. It's just it's shorter long and yeah, I enjoy all of it. The NESOB thing is, you know, hair has no sex. Yep. Yeah. And that's one of the things that's always irked me about salons is the I've had short hair, absurdly short hair mm-hmm. for about 15 years. Yeah. And I cannot stand the concept of going, "Why are you charging me like way more for giving the exact same haircut you just gave that dude because I have indoor plumbing?" Ooh. Yeah. Like, there's no justification for that. I So I have never had hair that short. I haven't anticipated or experienced, you know, any of that. But, yeah, that's that's super frustrating. Well, and that's why I've thus made my price list. It's a haircut. It's just time at the end <laughs> of the day. 
It doesn't matter. Like, and we get calls all the time. Like, how much is a kid's haircut? No, no, no. It's a haircut. Yeah. How much is a senior haircut? Nope. It's a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't matter your age, what plumbing you got, nothing. <laughs> it takes the same license, the same amount of skill to cut that hair. Yeah. That's when I, when I opened my shop, I got rid of the kids cut pricing. I have kids that are getting, I don't do like micro faders or anything on them, but they're getting bald fades essentially. So that's a, that's a lot of work. And sometimes a little more work because they might be a moving target. Yep. Doesn't have fun. Doesn't have as fun as doing a bald fade on a grown man. <laughs> Well, though I do have some people that uh, can't stay still as well as an eight-year-old. That is very true, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a, I have a six-year-old who sits better than a 35-year-old. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We all have those. Yeah. But uh, even especially the ones that, like, the adults that get flat tops but can't talk without moving their head. <laughs> yeah. I've got a couple. Yeah. Or when you're doing a beard trim. <laughs> and you're like, right, you're just about to make that like perfect cut and just and they talk set and you're that like, length and you're like, oh, cool, man. <laughs> Pull it back. I've taken to uh, when people go, oh, sorry, sorry. I'm like, oh, man, it's your haircut. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I get tattooed, I think I'm being so still while I'm reaching for something. And then I just feel a machine move out of my skin and I look over and I'm like, sorry. And he always hits me with your tattoo. And that hits so hard that I'm like, oh, you're <laughs> this is my tattoo yeah but that one's like permanent the other one grows back <laughs> yeah that's true that's like do you really want this to be like that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> life, decision. Talk, life decision life <laughs> decision uh yeah um same thing with senior though like um there was one point when half of my staff including myself are military veterans i don't offer that discount either yeah i go literally like congratulations if you made it to the age of 65 yeah it's not that much of a feat anymore (laughs) uh but you made it to 90 cool awesome but guess what i still have to make a living yeah like it is what it is yeah absolutely so i i I consider it to be something like if you hire somebody put down flooring Mm -hmm. like they might discount the materials they use but they're never going to discount their their time. Their labor is not something they will ever discount. Absolutely. So I feel the same way when it comes to us as services where it's like, I'm not going to discount my work because you're paying yeah. for me to do something. Like if, if I want to mark down some of my products for retail or whatever, sure, that's, you know, whatever. But mm-mm, not my time. Yeah, I, I've got I, occasionally – it happens that I have someone dip their head and be like, oh, you guys do buzz cuts? I'm like, yeah, sure do. How much? $30. He's like, well, it's just a buzz cut. It's not, man. If it was, you could do it yourself. Yeah, I'm like, there's a Great Clips down the street, and I think they're having their six ninety five haircut sale, so you can go get a buzz cut from them. If it's just a buzz cut, you know, I'm like, we're going to taper it. We're going to line it. We're going to razor you. We're going to go all the way <laughs> you're going to get the top-notch experience that we offer yeah that's what you're paying for you're the best damn buzz cut you've ever had mm-hmm. <laughs> complete with hot towel yeah. <laughs> yeah no i definitely i agree with that so all right we covered the the first salon lasting a month we covered the second salon lasting four years so how did you decide after you got your barber license like did you go straight into like opening a shop or did you work somewhere i don't have the balls to get my license and open a shop. I've seen people do it and I'm like, oh man, good for you. I at least waited a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, cause I feel like you're, you're going to mess up. I don't, I, I don't care where you got your education. Like you, you need humbling and you need to like, just like live in the real world for a minute. Well, and I mean, we, we see so many people from different walks of life and different like parts of their life enter barbering whether it's a second or third profession yeah so it's like hey if you've you know owned businesses before or whatever yeah. you might be ready to, to open That's one true, out of yeah. school from I the guess business for me side personally i'm like i need to i need to like kind of flap the feathers a little bit <laughs> first i guess well and you and i uh graduated from various licenses around the same times yeah. um so when you first got your cosmetology license we still had that requirement to work in the industry for one year before you could manage your own shop Oh, I don't even think I was aware of that. Yeah. I, like that wasn't on my horizon at all. So yeah, that was a law at the time. That was, that was the thing. Um, 
And as soon as I hit my year mark, they went, eh, we don't need that anymore. Never mind. <laughs> Thanks, New Hampshire. It's like waiting until you're 18 to be able to drink, and then they change it to 21. <laughs> oh, or no, and it being 21, and then they drop it to 18. That's basically how it was. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's Is like, it I don't oh, I don't, need, I don't need that anymore? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, but it was great anyway, because I, I, having a year in the industry – because maybe on the business side of it, there are people who had that under their belt when they entered. Mm-hmm. And it's like, all right, you, you've got that. And that's, I think, one of the reasons they did away with it is like, well, you do have people that were business owners before yeah. they were licensed. Why are you making them wait yeah. a year? Yeah. Um, but from a skill set standpoint, it's the it's never polishing. Hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Polishing those skills, getting a few more flat tops under yeah, your belt because absolutely. otherwise they'll make you poop every time they come in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's never going to be a bad thing. Now, I went um I went to a brand new shop once I got out of school and I was the first one that got hired and I did a lot to, you know, kind of help that shop build. Really, I think anyone that's there you know, when you open a shop, it's very important. Like first three months and six months and all that stuff, which oh, was nerve wracking being fresh out of school, even though I had, you know, the cosmetology experience. I almost kind of like threw my cosmetology experience away. I was just like, we're going to start from scratch and then brought it all back in. But, um, That's yeah, smart though. Yeah. I kind of just wanted to like be a little sponge. And just absorb. I mean, I guess I still am, but well, you're kind of figuring out a whole new world, and then like once you kind of understand its mechanics, then you can like bring those things back in and find out where they fit yeah. into barbering. Yeah, I think like my I didn't want to be that person that's like, oh, well, I did it this way, and then just deny yourself a different, maybe better way of doing things. And I found that I found that worked for me. It did. And then I brought back in the mo- most of the stuff I brought back in from cosmetology was just the, the sheer work and uh, t- like texturizing and stuff like that. And I remember the first time I ever like palm tree textured hair, I watched a bunch of faces in the room just be like, what was that? And this was like years ago. I think, you know, barbering has really come up a lot with like sheer work and texture work. But when it was a couple years ago, they were just like, oh my God. And I was like, and I just, it's funny because in cosmetology, that's just so like basic. Yep. Like that's, they're just like, that's, that's old hat to them. Um, yeah. So I worked, I worked there for three, almost, I think it was almost three years. I think it was almost three years before I left. And then I went right into opening my own shop. What shop was that that you worked in? Uh, it was the Polish man. Nice. They're on the, they're on the long-term list. Oh, yeah. Yeah, was, I mean, there's a lot of people working there, too. It's it's oh, very yeah. large now. And it's crazy. Like, I remember interviewing, and there was, like, it, the shop was being built. Like, there was no sign to find the shop. I had to find the shop by an orange dumpster out front of it. <laughs> I was like, oh, We're still ripping up the floor. Yeah, I was like, these directors are awesome. I hope I don't get lost. <laughs> and literally just sitting amongst construction rubble, like, while I was accepting my job. It was ridiculous, crazy. The only question being, are you sure you're going to be done in time? <laughs> yeah, I don't think they were. I think they had a delay. I mean, it's it's construction. It's going to happen, but yeah. That's one thing I can't imagine would, would be building a shop and hiring people before you're even built. Like, yeah, I can't imagine that. Yeah, I, had a, I mean, I had a different situation. I brought somebody with me from there, so... You know, I think there was, it wasn't like I had just met this person. Because we went over, I think, like, two weeks in construction on my shop. But it actually, for it being my first shop, because I had no idea what I was doing building a shop. Like, I can run a shop. I know how to run a shop, and I know how to cut hair in a shop. Building a shop, these guys would talk to me, and my eyes would just, like, glaze over. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking to me about, man. (laughs) Just a barber. (laughs) But, uh, and I remember being wicked frustrated with the town of Merrimack because I needed to get a, not a certificate of occupancy. I forget what it was called. Occupancy permits. Occupancy permits. Yes. Yep. So I needed that before I could send it up to the state and get my state inspection. 
so, you know, obviously I, I put in my notice at my old shop, you know, I was told that they weren't honoring my notice. So I was over at a hair salon in South Nashua, just cutting clients that I could in, in the meantime. So, you know, I'm paying rent there. I'm paying rent on this shop. Like they gave me a little leeway, but you know, the guy's still got to make money. And I'm like, all right, yeah. So like, if I could just get the certificate, because I think the state will accept a certificate of occupancy as well. I read somewhere. So I was trying to get them to get me that because it was already there for the building. So I could send it to the state. So I get everything just like scheduled, just like get it, get open a day or two earlier. I was just like, I don't want to be paying rent on two places right now. Like, and um, they're just like, yeah, 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 we'll find it. But like, well, you'll get on Monday. We'll be fine. And I was like, well, if I could have it sooner, that'd be cool. And they're like, yeah, 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 we'll look, we'll look. I was like, oh, you're not going to look. <laughs> you're not looking. All right, cool. That is one of those things that uh, I feel like, unless you have someone who's already done it uh, to pick their brain over. Yeah. When you open a shop, especially from scratch, it's like, if you are unfamiliar with city uh, departments, planning departments, yep. anything like that when it comes to pulling permits, um, sign permits, occupancy permits, getting inspections done for fire, electrical, like any kind of that stuff, it is just a foreign it's, land. Yeah, it's awful. And unless you happen to be working with a municipality that has like some paved, like, if you're a business you want to open here, we have a, a tool for you. Yeah, I would say they definitely don't. I mean, they're expanding at such a rapid rate, so I think everything's changing anyway. Most municipalities don't. But there yeah. are some that I think have the luxury of being so small that they can be very accommodating. Yeah. Um, but then there are those that just, they can't. Patience is the number one <laughs> game there. <laughs> I was lucky because when we moved, like I purchased a shop that was someone else's first. So I didn't have to worry about all that. Mm -hmm. It was just a transfer of license initially. But then when we moved and expanded, I had to deal with all that stuff. But thankfully I already knew a lot of things. We had five and a half years in the community. So I could go to city hall, very familiar with all the people that work there. Very like, Oh, Hey, you know, Hey, can I get this signed off or get scheduled? And I was able to, I had like two months for the whole build out. (laughs) <laughs> um, and I got, I got the signatures, I got everything set up and it was like, I needed to be open by, it was like July 1st because mm-hmm. I had to be out of there or it was like July 3rd or I can't remember. Yeah. Um, but so I had to like get the occupancy permit down to the barber board so we could get scheduled by Friday so I could schedule for Monday inspection so that we could be open. So I was like. I went to the planning office. I was like, here, I have all the signatures. <laughs> and they're like, if you want to wait, like, I can type this up for you right now. It's like, really? <laughs> okay. There's tears in your Thank eyes. Thank you. <laughs> and then after she did it, she was like, oh, right. Uh, do you, are you going to have an opening for Saturday? Because my, like, son or somebody, uh, like, needs to get a haircut because there's a wedding. And I'm like, yes. Yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> One hundred percent. Anything for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, I did not get that. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know. I think with everything that was so frustrating, I'm very good at taking lessons, like learning lessons from it. Like with everything that went wrong with this shop, like for the next time I build a shop, it's gonna be like a cakewalk. Oh yeah. To this way easier. Which. I mean, hopefully, but like everyone's... <laughs> oh, no, like, it will be. <laughs> yeah. I feel like with construction, it's, you always have to plan. I think with everything that could go wrong, like, did. Like, the building that I'm in was... It's very old, and it was a barbershop. So I took over a barbershop as well, but I, like, I, I like, scrapped everything because um, it, w- it was a failing barbershop. Like, the reputation was not good, so I was like, I can't keep this name... So I did a lot of building in there. Like that's like, had I just gone in and turned key, I wouldn't have had to deal with like half of this stuff. But, but it was, um, you know, it's a very, you can't, t- I've done a very good job at like masking it. It's a very crooked, crooked building. <laughs> There's like one part of the wall that's like 
is like comes out farther than the other part of the wall. Sure. And like no one notices. I notice it and it drives me crazy on a daily basis, but no one notices it. <laughs> Thankfully. Well, until you look at our ceiling, because I mean, this is also a super old building. Yeah. And tin ceilings. Yeah. So you should look at the tin ceiling and how it's cut and you could tell that it's like at an angle. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you just like every time you see it, just like your eye twitches just a little bit? Oh, no. At this point, I just accept it because it's an old building with good character. And I go, yeah. I didn't have to replace that ceiling. So I'm happy. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. It is a beautiful shop. You do a very beautiful shop. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, also, I'm like super OCT. So that stuff is just like a tiny little eye twitch. And then we move on with our day. No, it's the little things that are like modern issues mm-hmm. that I'm like, mm, like we have a floating floor. It's commercial mm-hmm. grade, but it's still a floating floor. Yeah. Um, and the people that put it in were in a little bit of a rush. Yeah. Uh, they did not put any sort of breaks in it. And it's a very long shop. So Ooh. in the past couple of years, yeah. it has like separated at places. I installed my floor, so I know like how bad that forfeited. is. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a, oh, you can feel a little, yeah. little change. I too have that. Yeah. That's, that's the things that I'm like. I paid this mu- how yeah. much for this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually I got to call the place that I bought my flooring in and I'm, I'm going to I'm not redoing I'm not doing it again. Like I'll I'll pay someone this time because yep. I don't have the time, but my time is worth more now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at the time though, I was just like, really? I guess I'll do this. Like it was fun though. It's kind of fun to put that click together flooring in, but I don't want to do it again. I did it once. That's that's good for a lifetime. <laughs> well, I think over the years like when you're first opening a shop the one thing you have to spend is time. Mm-hmm. You're like, if I can throw time at it, I'll get it done. Yeah. Uh, but you're like tight on money because you're trying yeah. to get open. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know, three, four, five years down the road, you're like, mm, can I throw money at it? Because <laughs> my time's a <laughs> little more valuable. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, when I went to go get funding from the bank, I'm, I guess one thing is like one of my number one qualities is I am not very willing to accept no as an answer that could be a good quality yeah in business yes absolutely so when i went to go get funding which my my partner had done maybe a month prior for his business uh i went to go for mine so i'm like he walked me through what he did he's just like yeah this is, this is easy like you just say this get this and then you get money in your bank account and i was like that sounds great and i went and did the same thing and they were like, what do you want to do? Open a, open a barbershop. Because I wasn't, I had to go for a personal loan because at my bank, I did not need enough to qualify for a business loan. So uh, they, you know, my, my credit score and everything was fine. Like there was no issues there. And then he goes, wait, are you going to leave your place of employment once you open this place? And I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> duh. And he's just like, oh, that's that's a problem. And I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, that's not a guaranteed income at that point. And I was like, God, that's because it's a personal loan, not a business loan. Yep. (laughs) But it's like, I would have had to take out like 15,000 extra dollars to get a business loan. I'm like, well, that's ridiculous. Um, so I went and I put on a fake engagement ring I rehearsed this too because I don't I don't like lying. I'm like the worst at it. So I was like, all right, what, what can I lie about that they won't ask for proof? It can't be a car loan because I don't have a title. And I so I put on a fake engagement ring. I went to a different branch of the same bank and I was like, oh, I'm getting married and I need like this much money. And I was they were just like, okay. And I was very sweaty the whole time, but I got my money. And uh, if you can't verify the reason why I need this person alone, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yeah. I'm so tempted. I, I won't because I'm sure it'll get me in trouble. I just so want to like finish like paying off like the loan for my business. I'm like, suckers, it was for the business. <laughs> <laughs> Policy sucks. But I, I guess they changed it in that month because he did the same thing and he got his money no problem. And I was like, man. Yeah, that's – I will say that I've never gone to a bank for – alone when it comes to business yep uh i'm very unfamiliar with that yeah so because i mean (laughs) when i opened the shop it was like banks are giving you loans yeah Yeah. (laughs) it was not a thing in in 2013 2012 um so it was like "Mm, i need to scrounge around for money (laughs) save up oh look credit card (laughs) yeah oh yeah I i thought about that i almost i almost went that route but uh, it was, it was very different. So yeah, I've never had to do that. I think the only thing I've done since then, other than 
because it's 2020, baby. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> SBA, you know, disaster yes. recovery loan. Yep. That's that's one. And then yeah. like Square, I, I've done a couple loans through Square because yeah. I don't have to justify anything to anybody. They already yeah. know my books because I use them. They They're like, it. oh, as long as we can get our money from you know the processing fees that we could charge you because yeah. you use our service. Yeah, my my uh, my acupuncturist and I go back and forth with that because I'm like, oh, how much is Square offering you this month? Because <laughs> it just keeps going up, which I guess is a good sign. I'm like, oh, that's cool. You guys are giving me more money, but uh, it's just so funny. I always get those emails. Well, they've they've since changed like their structuring process with it. Yeah, um, it used to be like, all right, you're gonna have this flat, you know, monthly fee, and it's you know your interest. There's a cap, and this is what you owe. Period. Like yeah. you get a loan for this much. This is how much you're paying total. Um, and you you know you'll pay this much per month and it'll be done in so many months. Yeah. Well, now it's a little more flexible, but also kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, where it's like it'll be you know, twelve percent of whatever your daily processing it was you know income for that yeah. day, as long as you meet the minimum payment of this amount every sixty days. Oh. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I hit that minimum amount for sixty days in like a week yeah <laughs> but, I mean, it is but you still have that like standard like cut off like this is how much you're paying for yeah. you're not gonna like accrue anything more that's cool it is and it's such a it's i feel especially you know in 2020 like good to have that to have that flexibility where it's like even if yeah. you don't make a lot yeah like you don't have to worry yeah you can still like you'll still have money in your pocket it's the same reason why you know barbers and hairstylists have a commission it's the it's great for new people that don't have as much of a clientele mm -hmm. where it's like you will leave with money in your pocket and I'm as an owner still going to have money. Yeah. Like we both will still get paid whether you do two cuts or 10. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to you have a flat booth rent. And if you don't, you know, get that, you know, two or three cut thing today, if you get a big old goose egg, you still owe me money. Yeah. Um, so it offers that security. Yeah, no, I, I do. I like having that. I think though, I've, I've learned a lot in this, you know, it's especially about like money and business and everything in this past, you know, almost two years that it's, I, I view debt a lot differently than I did back then. I think when I was opening the shop, I was willing to throw myself into whatever debt. Just, I'm just like, I just got to get it done. Like, let's just get it done. And now, obviously I slowed down before making decisions first, <laughs> but uh, I went to, it was at the Connecticut Barber Expo. They had the, I did the, the VIP because it got you that like pretty close access to the stage, but also the two day education. So the first day was a technical education and it was obviously jam packed. And then the second day was the like uh, self and like business education. Yep. A quarter of the people <laughs> there, I was like, oh. And it shows, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, they're, you know, this, but this guy was like, I drive a 2005 Dodge Dart. He goes, I own eight houses and he's just like these barbers he goes you want to throw yourself into the, like the escalade that's downstairs for eight hundred dollars a month like why so kind of just saving up more than dealing with banks is kind of more my jam these days i i run my business differently i think than most people because i my goal has already been met, which is to make sure I am providing myself and other people a place to work. Mm -hmm. Like as long as the overhead for the shop is met yep. by the booth rents that I bring in, it basically that means that I can work rent free. Um, yeah, that's that's all I care about when it comes to the shop. Yeah. Um, so whatever I make in my chair is what I make. So that kind of it puts me in a different perspective when it comes to like accruing debt, keeping the shop open, like, and how I'm going to like recoup those losses. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't want to own real estate. I, yeah. Uh, other than like the house I live in. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get rich, like more money, the more crap you got to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just liked his point of, you know, but it is very like, hey, don't get into stupid debt. Yeah, like you, you like can... I'll get into debt for business to, like to as the Absolutely. day is long because yeah. you know that your business will make money. Spend money, make money. And that's that's what I didn't get at first because yeah. I knew nothing about business before I opened something. Yeah. Or was that the whole concept? Like you hear your whole life, it, you know, it takes money to make money. Yeah. 
but you don't get that until you try and start. Yeah, I would agree. And then you're like, all right, well, when you lack money, what what else can we convert <laughs> to possibly into money? Yeah. Because it's all just like a chemistry thing where it's like converting one thing to another. Yeah. I wonder if anyone's ever crowdfunded their barbershop. I guarantee That's you people have. Happen. It's not a bad idea. I can't hate on it. <laughs> I I don't know about hating on it, yeah. but I take issue with it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't do it. I take issue with any business doing that, really. Yeah. Like, unless you are kickstartering where it's like you are promising a product because mm-hmm. that is that is an investor yeah crowdfunding when it comes to like gofundme stuff yeah is the you're asking someone for charity yeah and i'm not a fan of people asking for charity for a business yeah like the only reason my website my uh, online store this year had a donation button is because people my customers were frustrated that they wanted to help, but mm-hmm. they didn't want to buy a gift card. Mine were mine were the well, mine were the same, but they were just like, how how can I help? And a lot of them were just like, I want to buy a gift card. I want to buy a gift card, and then they just bought a gift card, and then just like some of them just don't even use it. Yep. And I'm just like, you can. I'm like, you can use it. It's like we're here, we're safe, we're good. I appreciate it. You know. Um, but that was the thing is, you know. We can't give you a haircut right now, but if you want to prepay for the haircut we can give you when yeah. we're open again, yeah. then I'm down for that. Because that's not charity. That's that's prepaying yeah. for, for a service. I didn't have like 50 people in a week using gift cards at the same time. Right. So I'm like, you're <laughs> fine, man. It's I appreciate it. Yeah, that was, it was very eye-opening. I felt so much love and support from clients and it was, it was very heartwarming. And it really, it yeah, kind of reminds you what you're doing like for the community and stuff. Well, I think... From a business mindset, it was poor decision making if somebody used a service like Square, who then offered free use of creating an online store. Like, if you sell mm-hmm. any retail, why would you not take advantage of that? Yeah. Go and, hey, if you want to support us, buy a t shirt. Hey, if yeah. you want to support us, buy, buy a shampoo. Like, yeah. I did um, curbside pickup days. I didn't think of the online store, mostly because I didn't want to have to go to the post office. But I did do like I did a couple days. Well, the online store like, rolled I'll be out here the from this hour to this hour. They rolled out the curbside pickup option, so you don't have to have a shipping option. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's that's, cool. that's all we offer for our online store is curbside pickup. Yep. But it was like, yeah, why would I not do that? And yep. then with going through a quote second wave, uh, yeah. and into the holiday season, it's like. Uh, hey, remember that online store? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember that you can't count on shipping? Like, Amazon Prime ain't Prime mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah. Uh, but you could still buy local. Like, you could still do it from the comfort of your home. Yeah. And just swing by and pick it up later. Same day. Yeah. Almost instant gratification. Absolutely. So, I, I'm. that's my goal for the holiday season is pushing that out, going, you know, we're still being creative here in 2020. <laughs> Use it. Yeah. Yeah. It's that is it really tested uh, your flexibility there, your adaptability, I should say. It was. Uh, I've never been so adaptable in my whole life as I have in 2020. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you really you had like you said, like with the online store, you know, adding in like I didn't have an e-gift card option on my website before before covid like i we, well, we had no reason to yeah we yeah we didn't need it ours are really cool like in store too so i'm almost kind of bummed about the gift cards because then they're not gonna come in and buy them we have like a wax seal and everything for our gift cards Ooh, nice. so I'm like, damn i can't do that over i'm here. a sucker for a wax seal i know i know my boyfriend totally ripped me off too he's getting them too I'm like, oh, how about you get your own ideas bud <laughs> but um but yeah no like stuff like that um very very good at saving i learned because it got 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 through the pandemic being a brand new business and you were like oh we gotta get these books in order because i don't know exactly how much it costs to run this place a month i <laughs> am actually for a first-time business owner really good with my books yeah i my tax guy did my taxes the first year and i was like how would i do and he was not bad and i was like oh man all right cool because <laughs> my um you know my, my boyfriend he's he's a tattoo artist so he's been doing that stuff for a while now so he's like tax write-off he king of tax write-offs like some of the stuff i'm just like i didn't even think about that 
and uh, and he would he kind of walked me through that a lot. So I've got like a whole file cabinet, QuickBooks, like everything, like the whole nine. It's all locked down. I'm I'm thankful I don't need to get that into it because my situation is simple. Yeah. And I've designed it that way. Yeah. Again, I'm not in it to make money. <laughs> I'm in it to have it be a thing. Yeah. And for it to be as simple on my brain as possible. Yeah. I think I'm just so scared of a freaking <laughs> the IRS I'm like don't come for me um, <laughs> but I'm it, ready if you are coming well, and that's why I have mine set up because I don't yeah. want to have to deal with like 1099s I did that one year and oh, I was like yeah, nope yeah. never again yeah so I I have a tax guy he makes everything really easy I paid a lot of money to make things really easy but like it's just one of those things like can I throw money at it like he just as long as I have my QuickBooks in order like he takes care of it all and I'm like thank you yeah, that's still one of those things that I, I keep doing myself, and it's like, look, I have booth renters, yeah. so I know every week what money I'm making oh, from yeah. them. Yep. I yeah. don't got to worry about that, and they're the ones that are covering the overhead. Yeah. And, I mean, other than keeping receipts and making sure you write it in pen so that, you know, when the receipt inevitably, like, disappears, yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> still know what it was for. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's a blank piece of paper. I swear, IRS guy. <laughs> this is what it said at the time. I've definitely lost a couple receipts, so uh, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully nothing bad happens. <laughs> but it definitely is one of those things that if somebody doesn't like give you a heads up ahead of time, though, it's like, I don't know. Did you use that in the shop? Yep. Did you talk about work during yeah. that? And I got. I just. I just hired a new girl who was. Uh, I believe she was an employee at her last place, so I'm just like, tax right off. Like I'm like, she's like, oh, I ordered this on Amazon. He's like, you should save the e-receipt. <laughs> Make sure you say because she's just like never done any of this before. Like it's yeah. like a whole new world. Because I mean, when you're W two, like you have nothing. Oh, the world is easy. You never even see the money that you make that yeah. goes to Uncle Sam. Yeah. Oh, I throw my. I would throw every receipt away. I'm like, this isn't gonna do anything. I don't care. And then. I had to like snap out of that real quick because I was W two at the first barber shop I was at. So this is the first time I've ever not bet on a W two, and it was just a wake up call. Yeah, I've always been uh, independent. Yeah, so I'm just lucky that for New England school barbering, like they cover the the different ways that you can be. Yeah, employed. they they did that with us too, but they just didn't go into like the details of it. Well, it, it, that's one of those, like, it's a chapter in the book, so yeah. they cover it, but, like, f for us, because it's such a mom-and-pop establishment, yeah. that, like, that's something they deal with all the time, True, and yeah. they quite often um, bring people in that are straight out of school into their shop, that it's, like, w it's our responsibility as business owners to educate you of, these are the things you might run into. Yep. And I'm, I'm super grateful for that because that helped me not Absolutely. only, like, working somewhere, but also setting up what I wanted to do and why. Yep. So when did you open Union Barber? February 7th of 2019. So, you know, almost two years. Yeah. Still pretty fresh. Still, yeah. Still learning every day. How many people do you have working at the shop now? Three. Three? Three, yep. I ju I ju well, three including me. Uh, just, I think, just because she's not even at a full week. She just started Wednesday. Nice. So. so any plans uh, of the next year or two to expand to more than three chairs? I will. I want to. And I'm just kind of taking it how about, like, by the books, really. Like, what are our books looking like? Because I don't want to hire a bunch of people that are all just kind of scratching for clients sitting around picking their nose all day. Of course. <laughs> so Roomba and I, Ryan Kirby, I never, I like never know if I should call him Ryan Kirby or Roomba. I called him Kirby for the, like a month before he started there. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I only know the Roomba nickname because of where he worked yeah. before. <laughs> <laughs> that nickname, <laughs> I was like talking to Danny Brooks, mm -hmm. who we used to work with, and we were at a barber social, and it was so loud, so he's like screaming into my ear. And I was like, "What's up with that uh, nickname?" And he's like, "Oh, you know, Kirby Roomba." And I was like, "Okay," and I was just like, "I don't get it." And then I didn't get it until he was at the shop. He bumped into something, and then he told me the story, which is 
way more elaborate than Kirby Roomba. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, well, yeah, they figured because Kirby's a gaff, uh, Kirby's a vacuum. A vacuum, thank you. Uh, and I bump into everything that Roomba is a more appropriate nickname. And I was like, okay, that is funny. That spe- makes more sense. And specifically, Kirby is a good quality vacuum. Know, it's a great and vacuum. you're like, you don't deserve that name. <laughs> you run into too many things. <laughs> yeah. But as a compliment to him, I have a Roomba of which I named Godfrey. Yeah. And so I, named it Kirby. I love him. <laughs> I have googly eyes on him and everything. Yeah. I, I uh, when he's not there, I kind of wish I had a Roomba that just had his face on it. We could just kind of do the same thing. You, you can know, make that happen. Shop. I, I could raise that, but <laughs> I've been to do. Um, that I derailed that. Where were we? Uh, possibly, you know, adding more barbers. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So Roomba and I are, you know, right now we're. I think I'm booked up into the new year. He's booked up about three to four weeks. And that's, I think that's too much for us. So, like, in comes Jessica. But she's super new. So I want to build her up a little bit first and kind of get her, like, I don't really have a way to put a percentage on it, but just visually about 80% booked before I start looking for somebody else. Sure. And um, So probably summer. Yeah. I mean, and then the holidays, too. I mean, the holidays. Oh, that's just going to be crazy. If we shut down again. I, like, everything's just, I'm just like, I don't know. We'll just take it as we go. Like, so, just cut hair and do a good job, and then we'll see what happens. So that's a segue. Uh, so I don't know about you. Yeah. We'll talk about um, what you might end up doing. I like to make decisions before uh, things end up happening. Yeah. <laughs> that way, like, I've already anticipated the possibility, yeah. and I already know what my response is, so it's not like an emotional reaction. Yeah. Uh so I've personally, for, for my shop and, and my guys, they can do what they want because they're booth renters. Mm-hmm. If the state of New Hampshire tells my business to shut down again, I'm uh. going to tell them to uh, happy go sit and spin. Ugh. Yeah. Because that's I where know. I am. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So I feel like when we, when we first reopened, like that whole threat of like shutdown and everything, it was like super scary to me. But now I'm just like, Meh. I don't know. I did enjoy the time off. It did. Uh, my body needed that. It was scary. You know what I mean? And I, and I miss cutting hair. Don't get me wrong. But um, Animal Crossing for 12 hours a day was pretty sick, too. <laughs> People were like, how do you feel about being back? I'm like, 3 p.m. wine was cool. But I did miss cutting hair. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. I'm going to have to do some pondering, some soul searching tonight. Because that's, that's I, f- I feel like that's one of those things that, you know, it is a possibility yeah. in the future. And, you know, you're going to have to, you know, I- I'm always a big fan of making a decision before you're faced with it. Yeah. Um, I would be, su- I think I would be surprised if Sununu let that happen. I don't think he I would wants too. that to happen. Well, and especially, this is uh, post-election. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, because in the state of New Hampshire, we now have a Republican governor that was reelected. We have uh, a House that is now Republican-controlled yeah. and Senate that is also Republican-controlled. And that's the first time that's happened since I've lived in New Hampshire. Yeah. Like, usually it's like one party is the head and the other party controls the yeah. body. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's never been the same thing all yeah. over. Um, so with that, I can't necessarily see it happening. But – yeah. You got it, yeah. You At the same prepared. time, despite the fact that our whole state is controlled Republican, Biden won our electoral votes. So yeah. anything's possible. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's, we obviously know a lot more, too, now. I mean, with the first time that we shut down, like, it was a lot scarier. So it, I was a lots lot more, of uncertainty. like, okay doing it. But yeah. um, we actually shut down a week before Sununu said to shut down. Yeah, I because think... we had our first case in Belknap County, and I was um... like, yeah, I can't really justify being open at this point. Yeah, we were... I want to say two weeks. I think. I think it was. It was St. Patrick's Day. Actually, it was my. It was my barber school anniversary too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my dad's birthday. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna soul search on that tonight. And that's that's one of those things. It's like you know what? Um, I don't fault anybody for doing what they did because I'm, I'm also very grateful for the first shutdown because yeah. of, you know where I was personally at the time yeah. it was necessary yep. and gave me the opportunity to fix a lot of stuff yeah. but also feel in control mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that sounds weird 
but yeah. I felt way more in control during lockdown because I'm that person that either I can do one thing and be nice or I can do 10 things and get them done. <laughs> yeah. And I'm very good naturally at adapting. So, you know, prior military service, yeah. adapt and overcome kind of crap. And, you know, I'm uncomfortable being comfortable. So mm-hmm. I need constant change and progress. So that kind of like weird chaos thing being thrown chaos into change, was like, yeah. all right, I feel great. <laughs> Let's get do? this done. <laughs> yeah. I have ooh, government paperwork to fill out. Okay. Because yeah. I'm familiar with that. I have, you know, background having to deal with that with the military. And, um, so I was in a very strong spot. And able to help my barbers. Yeah. Because they were not familiar with those things. Uh, and the craziness of unemployment. And yeah. That was... uh, I found, uh, I found like a glitch proof method. Because a lot of people had that problem with doing their weekly uh, yep. thing where it wasn't there. Like when you logged in, like your weekly thing to click was not there. Right. But if you went into your initial claim and just like looked through the pages mm-hmm. up until like page five, you would, like, find it. and then you went back to that screen, yeah. it would show up. That's so weird. And it was like super random glitch that I yeah. found. And I was like, hey, Gina, try this. Yeah. And she did it and it worked. I was like, it works for everybody. Yeah, I didn't have too many. I It never crashed on me. It never... I did mess up my first initial claim because I'd never filed unemployment before. So I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Just clicking these keys. But, um, it, in general, it was fine. I think I, it it was delayed, but then I got like three unemployment checks at a time. And I was like, okay, this is cool. That was the only real thing was, you know, the the three week delay of getting paid. Yeah. And I was, I mean, I was, I oversaved for taxes. So I counted myself very fortunate. I was able to quote myself. for. That was one thing that I had like, so, Uncle Sam's not getting his quarterly payment. Yeah. Because we're eating through that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and that was my thing, too. Like, I called my tax guy. I was just like, uh, this is my plan. Like, worst case, if I have to go into my tax, I save th- throughout the year and uh, and then just pay it all off at once. Yep. I was like, if I have to do this, like, I'm just going to do it because, like, we're, like, I'm, they can wait. I'll go on a payment plan with the IRS. Like, I'm keeping my shop open. Yep. And he's just like, yeah, absolutely. So luckily I didn't, I didn't have to go in too far. I, w- I, I saved a lot. I'm an aggressive saver, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I found that out. Because I, um, and I, it's kind of an unfortunate event that started it, but I was six months into my shop when I got hit with a cease and desist from another barber shop, And I had to cough up money for a lawyer because again, I don't like being told no. So I coughed up money for a lawyer and fought a cease and desist six months into business. And I never anticipated that at all. So how'd you get a cease and desist? It was, um, I probably shouldn't go into too much detail because it is, yeah. it's, it's, it's like, those it's things are like ongoing kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was a barbershop that was 750 miles away that had a similar name. It was Union Barber yeah. versus Union Barber Company. Yeah. And um, there are quite a few of them, but uh, they have a stylized, they have a trademark for stylized logo. And they said that my shop was confusingly similar. And they hit me with season assist. And I just like, I feel like you try to plan for everything. And I never planned for that. I was like, I actually, my shirts are based off of a Ramon shirt. Yep. I expected a cease and desist for that. Right. <laughs> and I was just like, all right, I'll just stop selling them when I get that. Like, whatever. Like, I like this. Did not expect one. Like, I expected one, just not that. So I called every single shop, like, that I could find on Google and was like, who else got hit? Who else got this? And there was one other guy in Corona, California. And I kept in contact with him and I told him, I am not bowing down to this. I don't think you should either. Also, there's laws, uh, I forget what it's called, but basically if you ask for it first, once, if things escalate to court, which luckily they didn't, um, it basically means that person has to go and fight this court case in the state, like in New Hampshire. So yep. I was like, so he would have to go to New Hampshire and California. Mm. And um, 
he was like, oh, all right, cool. And I was like, let's do it, man. Like, let's do it. Steam up. And they just never heard from him again. So, but lawyers are very expensive. And yep. <laughs> once I read her letter, though, I was like, oh, my God. Like, she went in on this guy in, like, the most professional lawyer way possible. But I was like, okay. Well, and that's were, why we paid them. You were worth that. <laughs> okay. I see you. <laughs> But uh, but I, but ever since that, I was like, I, it's it waits for nothing. Like bad times wait for no one. Yep. So you need to be prepared for this. And um, so I just I aggressively saved, and there you go, coronavirus. Here we are, and I was like, oh, okay, we're 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 gonna be all right. Man, I feel like that's something that we haven't really like touched on with anybody because nobody I've talked to so far has experienced that is the audacity of some. People. Oh, it's on sale. Audacity. <laughs> I'm like... Yeah. I, I will say that that is one thing that I did when I came up with the name of my shop because it, before it was a shop, it was a product line that, of products that I make. Okay. That's pretty cool. And I just like the name so much that I was like, well, I'll just make a barbershop out of it. Well. Yeah. Um, but I was like, I'm Googling the crap out of these words yeah. so that like there is no question that the, I will be confused with anybody. Yeah. Uh, so I was very fortunate that there was like, nobody had put those two words together. Yeah. I was like, Oh yeah. Sweet. It was hard to find a name. Mm. Oh my goodness. It took me three hours on a slow day at the barbershop. It took me a year, a year because I was like, I want something that obviously sounds cool. You know, you don't want a lame sounding. And, um, and I just, I didn't want my name in it. Not, saying anything bad against anybody who has their name in a barbershop like that's cool it just was not something that i wanted to do well and it's smart business sense when it comes to like if you're if you're making your shop so that you can someday sell it possibly Mm -hmm. like you want to make sure that it's separate from you as an individual because you're not always going to be there correct yeah um kind of like you know you don't know if you might end up having to move it so don't name it on the road that you're currently on main street haircuts whatever you know but that's just like my personal suggestion yeah. and what I was suggested to by another was like, this is a downside that's of doing a, yeah, that. I didn't, I didn't actually think about that, but yeah, that's, that is a good point. Um, but I, but it also like, I wanted it to mean something to me. Like I just don't, cause people always ask. Right. And it's like, I didn't want to have the answer. It's like, Oh, I just thought it sounded cool. So here we are, <laughs> you know, like, and I think it's cool. Like with your product line and stuff like that, you're like, yeah, like, why wouldn't I do that? But, uh, so I, and I Googled and I found, I think everything that I found was like in mass or Maine or Vermont. Like it was always like really close. And I got to the point, I'm like, I need something. And I found, you know, I thought of Union Barber Company and I was like, I really like that. It means a lot to me. I was like really struggling. And I think the only Union Barber, co- there's only one other and they're in like Portland, Oregon. And they're not like, they're not the ones that did that cease and desist. That right, I want, right. I want to like, like oh, those, those guys. We but, like um, them. They're in the other yeah, they're Portland. they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. Uh, but they were, and I'm like, you know what? It's Oregon. It's far enough. It's the other side of the And country. they're usually pretty chill over there anyway. Yeah. They're always like drinking coffee, wearing flannels. I don't know whatever they do over there. Happy to see the sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was just like, all right, cool. Like, we're going to do this. And like, clearly I'm having, it's, I went through so many names some like ridiculous names but i am i'm pretty happy with the name that i chose I, l- I like things that are you know clear and concise and yeah you can you can diversify your logo over the years if you yeah. feel like it like you're not tied heavily down to like one specific thing yeah like something that has sailor in the name is like well you've limited yourself to an Eggers. aesthetic <laughs> And it's not to say it's bad, but you know, no. you're you're accepting that as a reality. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I that, actually do want to change my logo soon. That's the thing with like we just did. Ah, did you? Just oh, did. actually, I saw it on the mirror. Yeah, or, like, that mirror that you posted. Yeah. I was so excited. I was that, like, it, look, it does look love. a lot I'm in love with this logo. And I think that's something. It's funny. I like. I wouldn't look at that, like the old one, and be like, oh, that's you know. Yeah, but like what, when you have it comparatively to the new, you're like, okay, okay. Yeah, all right. That's, that's an up. upgrade. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that was like, the, the one that was on the mirror was the first. Oh. The original, like the product line. Yeah. The the font. That's, wow. It started out as just a font. Yep. <laughs> and then I got a logo, which it's done by a graphic designer and everything. Yeah. And then my same graphic designer, which I've kept, um, 
did the new one. Okay, it's yeah. Because, like, I mean, he's grown with me well, yeah, with he, the shop. He's evolving his own skills. Yeah, and he's time. a customer, and yeah. like uh, he understands the, the motif, the aesthetic, and um, keeping that at the core yep. while growing it as a, as a brand. Yeah, absolutely. I do. Do you, do you try to get services from like your clients first? Like if you're like, if you need like tree removal and you have a client that does tree removal, like I, I always try yes to and no, Um, cause there's a, this is a double edged sword. Mm. Like, yes, I, I want to support my, my clients yeah. as they support me, but say in cases like, like screen printing services. Yeah. We'll use that as an example. Yeah. Um, I have an issue, like when you're dealing with local people, there's sometimes, we establish so much of a connection with people that offense can be taken when something is not in your price range and you have to say, I'm sorry, that, mm -hmm. that, that can't work for me, it's just not going to work. Yeah. So in order to avoid that situation entirely... <laughs> I will initially go to the internet <laughs> and find a faceless company <laughs> yeah. and go through them first to see like, am I going to like this? Am I, you know, what kind of material do I want on, you know, whether it's a shirt or a beanie yeah. or whatever, um, you know, do these colors work? Does it translate? And I can just like, I can design it on there. I don't have to talk to anybody. I can order it. I can get it. And it's like, all right, do I like it? Do I not like it? Yeah. And I don't have to worry about whether something is in my price range and like offending someone yeah because that's that's a that's a fine line to walk especially yeah. in close-knit communities like laconia ain't big yeah we got sixteen thousand people yeah in we're city we're a bit bigger in southern new hampshire <laughs> <laughs> so like it's really hard to go somewhere without running into somebody you know here yeah yeah and that's just not like i'm an avoidant person yeah i avoid conflict so that's something i'm not willing to deal with yeah <laughs> But when it comes to more practical stuff, like I've had to, you know, ask one of my customers who's a plumber to, you know, fix the toilet mm -hmm. in the shop. Dude, hey, if you got a, t a second, I'm more than happy to barter. Like, yeah. I will be super grateful for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm all down for it. But yeah. there are just specific instances that are like, mm, <laughs> maybe not. Not this time. <laughs> yeah. What I, don't about mind, I haven't encountered any issues with it yet either, though. So maybe once I do, I'll change my tune, but. Yeah. And you know your customers better than anybody where it's like, you, you know, their personality. Yeah. And, you know, what you can touch on and what you can't. Yeah. And like, yeah, like, I don't think I would go to like someone else's, you know, clientele, but you know, like Ruby, you know what I mean? Cause he knows them better than I do, but like mine specifically. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. And, um, more often than not, like I have other customers wanting services that I'm like, yeah, I, I got a customer that can help you out. Oh, yeah. So oh, I like to I'm, be that I'm middle like man. the queen of that. <laughs> yeah. Like, I got a guy. <laughs> That's, like, the bigot. Like, I'm like, I got a guy. I got a guy for that. <laughs> the downside for us is, like, like, literally all my customers that do that are always talking about them being slammed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So I go, all the good people are busy. So if you're finding somebody that's not, I don't recommend them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely absolutely that's the same thing when it comes to hair it's like yeah do you do you deal with new customers before covid uh, yeah <laughs> where they were like oh why is the wait so long oh i had a woman hang up on well okay so it was the other day but i had a woman like a couple weeks ago like hang up on me oh because your book's so far out yeah I, she well she needs saturday from 12 to 1 and i'm like i and literally the first thing to fill up. <laughs> yeah, like, like, sorry, you only have one hour a week. And she's like, I've been trying to. And I even, I was literally in the process of saying, if you would like, or, you know, you, you should call Stay True because I know they just hired somebody, so they might have availability. Like, I was in the process of, like, I send people to them all the time because they're just, like, some of my favorite people. And she just, like, click. I was like, Hello? Okay, like, he's like, I'm trying to help you, ma'am. That is one of the cool things, though, when you have a great, great rapport with another shop. Oh, yeah. It's like the ability to just be like, look, I'm sorry that, like, we can't fit you in, yeah. but I can send you to somewhere that 
it still does good work. Yeah, and it's very like like it's we very we coexist very well. I would say because they've sent people our way as well, um, and I just I can't say enough nice things about them. And I also, you know, I'm not gonna send someone somewhere where I don't think they'll get a good haircut because that I feel like also reflects on me. Yeah. So I think you know you can say pretty confidently that anyone there is gonna do a good haircut. And they're all like sweethearts of individuals as well. Like they're just the nicest people. That's one of the reasons why, like, despite the fact that we have twice as many shops in Laconia as when we first opened, mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm not mad at it as long as you know they're good shops. Like, yeah. please have more good shops open because yeah. that means if we can't fit them in, they can. Yeah, absolutely. And that means I can look at less bad haircuts when going into the grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's ultimately all comes back around to being very self-serving. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I see some interesting stuff in Merrimack. <laughs> well, I mean, what's the population of Merrimack? It's they have like apartment complexes after apartment complexes going up, like to the point that their infrastructure, I think, is going to be. Well, because I mean, it's a, it's a burb of Manchester. Yeah, technically, they're coming up though on their own. They really are. They're growing very. It's. I'm, I just, like, got off of Facebook, but when I was, like, in the town forums and stuff, like, it's all they talk about is, like, how quickly it's expanding, which is great. I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> Are their taxes, like, really low? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I get, like, the Zillow drop downs, and I'm like, Jesus, like, 450k for, like, a two-bedroom house. It's, like, not big. I'm like, okay, Merrimack. <laughs> it, it must be because of the highway. Like, I the think, commutability. Yeah from Merrimack yes and it and it is like you're right in between Nashua you're right in between Manchester Bedford you know like you can get to places and you can get the Boston easily. yeah and but it is still a nice town so you've got you know they just redid a plaza that has like a thirsty moose it's got like all this cool stuff in it so it's it's expanding very very rapidly um I don't know what the fuck was I I don't know getting my home there <laughs> things don't up expand up here the way that they do down there yeah we're very like in a bubble yeah i like it though i love driving up here like oh yeah I would, but I would love to this is here. the vacation bubble that's true yeah well because you have like when when is squam when is winnipesaki nearby yes i've never so actually laconia, been there laconia is known as the city on the lakes yeah because it touches three oh, lakes okay. and we have a trail we call the wow trail because it touches all three of those lakes or it will um Winnipesaukee, Winnesquam, and Opeechee. Okay. So Opeechee is in the middle of Laconia. Yeah. Winnesquam's on one side. Got Winnipesaukee's it. on the other. And there's a river that connects them. Yeah. Well, plus you get bike week, too, up here, right? Yes. How's that? Um, Does that affect you guys at all? Or are you just, Not like, really. You just see the hogs I, rolling through? Yeah. They'll roll through downtown, because okay. 106 is Main Street. Yeah. Um, but the, the heart of Motorcycle Week is the Weirs, which is another section of of town yeah so people don't even know it's laconia technically yeah um but that's where like all that action happens where and it'll go through parts of meredith it'll go <laughs> into loudon for the speedway but like downtown doesn't hold any events for it yeah like it used to so it's like mm, we get the rumble of people coming through but that's about it especially this year where like a month out they didn't know exactly <laughs> when it would happen or if it would that's happen true, yeah so it's very like is this week motorcycle week? I, I guess it is. Yeah. Because it was right after Sturgis this year. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, I've never, I've actually never been there. Been a motorcycle week. I have, have you guys, so you guys must have had like a really big influx of clients after COVID though, right? I mean, everybody. Massive. So the way, and it's, it, again, it's so crazy that like, depending on what part of the state you're in, totally different experiences mm -hmm. so for us because we are such a vacation destination um we had the initial like making up for two months of being closed we had the it took two months to catch up for us because yeah. we've been around that long we have that much clientele yep and then we dipped for a couple of weeks uh and then it shot right back up because <laughs> everybody's like we can now vacation <laughs> yep somewhere we can Go to our summer house. Yeah. So everyone was here. Like, everyone. You saw New York. You saw Connecticut. You saw Rhode Island. You saw Massachusetts. Everybody was here. Um, and everybody was at spending money. So, again, unlike the rest of the country, like, we were having a feast of a time because everybody's here. Like, if you're in a trade, spending money. <laughs> if you sell recreation, 
people were spending money. Like mm-hmm. they couldn't keep boats in the marinas. They couldn't keep like ATVs, jet skis. If you had anything recreation, you were sold out and trying to get more in like crazy. Wow. Uh, if you, if you did like plumbing, carpentry, anything like that, that was like home improvement. Lowe's was packed. Couldn't oh, yeah. get lumber in. Yeah. Um, because you had people that were like in their summer home where they usually spend a week or two. Everybody wanted a new deck. And suddenly they're here for three months and they're like, I have to look at this bathroom for three <laughs> yep. months. Honey, this is not acceptable. <laughs> and then some of them actually stayed here and took up residency so that their kids could um, be in our schools with much lower numbers yep. uh, and much lower case numbers here than back where yeah. they're from. We were we were turning away people from Massachusetts. Like... Obviously for, like, the health concern, but also we were just jam-packed. I'm like, I don't want somebody who's driving up from Boston that, like, the second their barbershop opens, they're gone. You know what I mean? That's not a long-term client for me. I want everyone in town that hasn't had a haircut for months. Well, I saw that with Wilfred's where they were like, look, we're not accepting new clients right now. We're only accepting people we already take. And at at the same time, though, I go, how do you control that, though? Like, how do you know? We loosely control it because, yeah, we have online booking. So a couple people, you know, slip through the cracks. But if I saw a 978 number or I, th- I think um, it was 617, was the other one? 978 for sure. Eight, I nine. think 617 is down there too. Yeah. So they call like, oh, you a mass resident. And hopefully you tell the truth. <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to look beyond that. That's kind of like those four questions. We're hoping you're telling the truth. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, are you a mass resident? And they would be like, yeah. And I'd be like, sorry, bud. Cause, and that was the thing, too, is I was like, do I take mass clients at all? Because I have mass clients that are existing. I have, like, weekly clients that are mass clients. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Tell this guy I can get a haircut for months? Like, uh, it was weird. It was very much something you had to play by ear. Like, yeah. Like, how did you do – like, did you open May 11th? Yep. And what did you think on June 1st when they rolled out the second wave of uh, restrictions? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well <laughs> – I had like a friend who is a cosmetologist. She was kind of, she didn't go back right away. And she's like, I don't want to be a test subject. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that makes me feel great. Um, very, it was aggravating. It was frustrating. And I get it, it's, everyone's just doing their best. But I think it was frustrating to have the state board, not even the state board, it was the task force. Task force typing up state board rules because they word it one way. And it's usually there's a lot less question in gray area when the state board words things as there is when someone who's not in our industry is wording these things. Are the recommendations versus musts? Yeah. Yeah. And like even once the the mask, the masks like could come off for beard trims, it was like the way it was worded was like, you must keep the mask on unless you're performing a service that's under the mask, in which case you should listen to the cdc recommendations which, which is, is wear a mask yeah <laughs> so i was just like oh this is so frustrating so what did you decide to do with that because i know there's still places that are not doing beard trims i we we're doing them but uh if someone like if they're like if they're like oh i have you know allergies like i mean we've been like really aggressive with like the intake i'm like if you have allergies or a cold and you don't have a negative code test like you can't come in here so we've been pretty on top of that. But yeah, we're doing beard trims. I don't know if people are like, how do you mean for them? So I was like, fine. Well, especially with having to wear a mask all the time. It's like, and I can't get a beard trim? Yeah. God damn it. I'm eating this all day. So are you guys offering anything other than uh, beard trims right now? So. Because I mean, now our restrictions are lifted technically to the point where you can offer, there's no time limit. Yep. There's, you can you know, do any service you're licensed to do? We're pretty much back to full service. I mean, we were doing, like, skin treatments, scalp treatments, stuff like that. Uh, We we are – I think the only thing we're not doing is, like, nose waxing. You did that? We used to, yeah. (laughs) Well, I mean, we will again. I just have, like, the hard wax, so I can get in the ears – Oh, the in, Yankees. Like, inside, like, yeah, the, the, and stuff. the super yank yank with Q-tip super situation. Fun. 
I don't do Q-tips because that's those fail videos you see online. Where I've never the, seen fail videos. I don't look for those. I they're brought to my attention. <laughs> but the uh, with the Q-tips, the cotton will come loose from the stick, uh, and then you're just like, oh, cool. What do I do now? Get the pliers. Yeah. So uh, and even I think before with that service, I offered it because people wanted it, but I would always like preface it with like you shouldn't do this that's your body's natural immune system so even before but like now like especially now i'm like you need all of those it's <laughs> a pandemic me. leave the nose alone yeah <laughs> ears okay fine <laughs> yeah I'll do it all day but uh one thing i didn't anticipate coming back what was with the amount of new clients that you've never seen their full face yeah before <laughs> You don't know if they're hiding a mustache? Or I had a guy what? with a goatee. I was like, I did not pay you as a goatee, man. And it's like, <laughs> your, I feel like your brain subconsciously makes a face for what's under there if you don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, it's kind of like if you always see somebody wear a hat and then suddenly you see them without the hat, you're like, that's not part. No, there's part of Put your silhouette is missing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was the first time I saw that, I was like, what? <laughs> and I didn't, I, it was like something I never even thought about until it happened. And I was like, oh. Yeah, I had a couple of those. I'm like, uh, uh, realizing, man, after this, I'm not going to know who you are unless you, like, cover up the bottom half of your yeah, face. Yeah, like, you're like, oh, who what's are your you? name, man? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Just cover my mouth real quick. Yeah, it was it was wild that first time. I was like, this is so weird. And I don't know if, like, anyone else has encountered this. Like, I mean, I guess other than, like, us two sitting here because, like, no one talks about it. But, like, this is going to be weird. Hey, the things people need to talk about. Mm -hmm. Like, I just did a beard trim today, and I haven't seen this guy's face in, like, nine months. Yeah. Like, I cut his hair, you know, like, once a month. But he next never gets a beard trim from me. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't realize it, but your mustache is extremely red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It it's feels, like, yeah, I was looking at that today. I didn't notice that. I, it feels so wrong and, like, dirty to take off someone's mask. I feel, Once you go do, like, a beard trim, I'm like, this feels wrong. I will say, though, uh, because I next, like, I don't really deal with the, the ear loops. I don't move them. Like, I will mm -hmm. move them out of my way, but I'm not yeah. going to remove them from the ear unless you're wearing a mask that's too small. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that's the only way I can get to your hairline. Yeah. Uh, but... I will say that there is a huge difference between like you removing somebody's mask yeah. and them removing it. Yeah. So I make other people like, I go, all right, it's time for beer trim. Take yeah. off your mask. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be like a doctor. The difference between removing your pants and them yeah. having you remove your pants. Yeah. Is like malpractice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, I do. It's like 50, 50. I think it just depends. Sometimes I just do it. And then other times I'm like, get that thing off. But, um, I made this reference and, Everyone in the shop agreed. I was like, I imagine, like, I've never done this, but I imagine this is what taking off someone's bra feels like. <laughs> like, I feel like it probably feels about the same. <laughs> I can only empathize, but everyone agreed with me. All the boys agreed. But, yeah. That they'd know. Experts. <laughs> I think the worst is when somebody comes in with uh, a tie-around mask. Yeah. Especially when it's like a double tie around. Or like the full, I don't know what they're called, but it's just its just straight fabric around your whole head. Oh, yeah, the, the, the gator <laughs> thing. Gator, yeah. I actually, like, I keep disposables around and I go, so we're switching that out. I am right by the door. I'm like, no. Yeah. It's Even covering up half my work. I've got a good amount of disposables, so I went overboard Ooh. on getting masks because I was like, well, I have to assume that no one's going to have one. And like, obviously it's not what happened, but I was very, I got a, I got a ton. So did you do the initial, like the state? Uh... Yeah. They give me a lot. And I just like, haven't gone through them that much. So like, even if someone has like a really thick mask that I'm like, I don't feel like dealing with this today. I'm like, you can have this. <laughs> so I was very conservative with my initial order because I was like, oh, so we can just reorder later because yeah. initially that's what they said. Yeah. And then that ended up not being the case. Yep. And I didn't want to be like the stingy shop that's like, I need a thousand masks. Yeah. I don't, th well, I don't, I didn't fill out a quantity. I just, they, they were like, how many people will you have in your shop a day? And I put whatever the number, you know, like assuming we're fully booked, which we were. Um, and then they just gave me like what they gave me. Like, I didn't even get the option to I got, fill out. I got 150 masks. What? Was that three boxes? Three boxes. Oh, my God. I think I got 
seven or to nine. And I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, and uh, I couldn't tell you how many more times I've reordered from, like, Amazon and stuff. Yeah. Because I was like, all right, well, they're going to have this, you know, as something we can utilize. Yeah. And I didn't even, like, if it wasn't for Reed from uh, the Groomsmith, I wouldn't have even gotten the freaking link. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got it from someone, too, because I didn't know either. And I guess they were doing thermometers, too, that I did not know about. What? They were doing the touchless thermometers. Hmm. One of my uh, one of my bar owner friends was telling me that. Yeah, didn't know that either. Mm. Our communication skills are great. Yeah, I know. I don't. It was. I would say you. You really had to. You had to check for all of it. Like. Oh yeah. No one's telling you. You had to be extremely active. Very and I diligent. was. And I was when I was home. It was easy. It was very easy. I was on all calls. I was on the Zoom meetings with the state board. Like I was like on top of it. But then you go back to work, and I don't know about you, but I was exhausted. <laughs> like two months off my body was not prepared for that. And I even like, I got back into a sleep schedule. Like I was like, we're going to, we're going to go up into this as, as best we can. <laughs> but after like, I, 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 I'm, I'm there for 10 hours. I used to do 12 hours and I would get home and I would just look at my boyfriend, like with my eyes half open. Can I not talk to you? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. I did 12. This 10 is killing me. <laughs> like, I was like, what <laughs> happened? Like you would have thought I was dragged behind a train. <laughs> and, um, now and now I'm fine, but it was it was and I was sore at the end of the day. I was just like everything hurts. Like I was like, how did I do this? I I will say that um, periodically I have taken time off to do other things. Like yeah. I, I did some education for five weeks in in Colorado oh, a few cool. years ago. So like I have taken stints of time off of doing barbering. So my body is pretty good at like coming Come back out, it's not back, a huge yeah. thing i have feet ache but that's like normal yeah. um my eyes the first week oh yeah it was like like driving for several hours yeah. in a blizzard yeah like that kind of hyper focused because yeah i mean when we're in it we're constantly focusing on details that's what we do yeah but when you don't have to do that for two months and your eyes are like or like for anything, you're you know staring at a screen, doing yeah. one thing or another, filling stuff out, or watching a Zoom meeting, or yeah. watching your you know Netflix binge of that day, yep. you know whatever you happen to be doing, it's not the detail that we're it's used not, to doing. No. Yeah. And my eyes were like, my head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I miraculously didn't. That's the only thing I didn't have. No, <laughs> but my feet at the end of the day were barking at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, thankfully over the eight years of owning a shop, I've gone through quite a few like shoe attempts and mm -hmm. like, are you going to deal with like what I need you to do? Yeah. How are you going to do? Um, and I've found a really nice groove with a super random pair of shoes yep. that have been fantastic. Bands all day. Bands slip on. I can't. No, I, oh, I have, I, I did that for a while yeah. and it was like, it's great for winter because yeah. I wear all my slip on boots to get in the snow, come to the shop, change them out, get yep. another slip on. But they have no arch support. Mm -hmm. And I have high arches. I need that support. Uh, so, like, I wore my, my Vans today because they're Toy Story. <laughs> I've, I've heard you like Disney. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my Crocs, which match the shirt that I'm wearing. This is my Saturday after work get up. <laughs> so the only reason I wore those shoes is because they stay here at the shop. Yeah. And... I knew I was going to be wearing my Crocs after work, so I didn't have a backpack to put them in. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, no, 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 Crocs today. <laughs> but I wore them yesterday, too, and I was like, oh, no, I have to wear Vans two days in a row. <laughs> yeah. My Messy. feet are going to suck. <laughs> yeah. Because Friday is, is Toy Story Friday. I, my entire outfit is. Really? I have the best cutting shirt. It's like a, a bowling-style shirt from... And it's all Toy Story 4 characters on it. Yeah. It's amazing. The fabric, I don't know what it is. <laughs> the hair just falls right. off of it. So I that save that for Fridays. Mm -hmm. I got my Pizza Planet shirt on underneath it. I've got that over top. I've got my uh, Little Green Men Vans. I got a Toy Story, like, the, the ball hat to wear. Yeah. Like, I am you full send. decked out. Full send. Yes. It's happening. Like, change the watch face. Yeah. <laughs> I've, got, I've got an Alice in Wonderland leg sleeve. That's, that's as far into... That and Moana. Moana's obviously amazing. But those, that's, how, that's how far I go into Disney. Oh, no. I've, 
I've got a Lilo and Stitch backpack like right beside me right now. <laughs> I'm like, I'll never turn it off. Don't get me wrong. I will never turn off a Disney movie. I'm like always down to watch. Well, it, you know, it's, everybody loves at least one Disney thing. Yeah. I just happen to like the company as a whole <laughs> yeah. and all of its subsidiaries. Yeah. So I like, I'm on a different level of like, I know what Disney's doing when it comes to like the stock market. <laughs> Who the CEO is, like I hope how they invested at least. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know far too much not to be. Well, not only do I like have stock in Disney, I also own a timeshare that's Disney property. Oh, you know, cool. I have their credit card. You know, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. That's so cool. I'm on it. It's good. I think once I'm a little older, I'll be more uh, Margaritaville. <laughs> <laughs> once I'm like 75. That's fine. Margaritaville all the way. <laughs> you got to find, you know, what you want to do when you're done cutting hair. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's one Someone's thing that we haven't gotten on. All day. <laughs> like, when you're done being a shop owner, what do you want to do with your time? Like, are you going to be one of the barbers that know. cut till you die? Because there's plenty. So, I, I don't think I, like, once I'm, like, 65, like, I don't think I'm going to have the physical capabilities to cut full time. But, like, I can't picture not doing it either like one or two days you know i don't know like i don't i don't know so i'm very much that person like i wasn't expecting to be in this profession for 10 years because i'd get bored super easy yeah um and then like i have nerve damage so i was like i wasn't sure where that was gonna go yeah um but i still don't think like can't just I, I don't it. think I'm gonna be doing this at 50. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if I'll be doing this at 45. Yeah, I feel like you'll just have to come in and just like hang out in the barber shop. Like I could see myself still owning it. Yeah, but my long term goal has always been to the point of not having to cut hair. Yeah, I think I think out of just I want to, I would at least have to do one or two days. Sure. Like, I, I don't know. It's like, I couldn't just leave. I've been doing it for so long. And, like, I enjoy it a lot. But, um, but, yeah, there's definitely goals and stuff that I have down the road that are, they're just in such baby steps right now that it's, like, it's nothing. But, but goals matter. Like, if you don't, do. if you don't have them, you have no direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I mean, I would love to down the line open some, own something like with my boyfriend because i we've we've got like a decade under our belt just the two of us and we were actually gonna go into this together to begin with but it was so hard to find somebody that would accept a tattoo shop there's so much like stigma around it <clears throat> which i don't understand because they're like as uh, just short of an emergency room when it comes to like cleanliness yeah if oh, you're yeah. doing it right and he he's hospital level sir i mean there's stuff that i wouldn't have thought about coming back after corona like after the covid shutdown that he brought to my attention like spraying down your sanitizer you know spraying down your cool care yeah. with alcohol spraying your clipper handle with alcohol you know your water bottle stuff like that like never would have thought about that and there's there's i you know i was talking to one of my friends who didn't think about it she was cleaning her stuff with ammonia, and I was like, oh, that's not killing viruses. Also aggressive. Yeah. She was like, well, this is what I was given. I'm so mad. This is what I was given. And I was like, are you wiping down your clipper handles? And she was like, no. And I was like, then it wouldn't matter anyway. Like, it's the same germs going over everyone's head. Like, so I was really thankful for that. But, um, yeah, people just don't want a tattoo shop anywhere. And it's, it's insane because he makes way more money than I do. <laughs> The hourly rate's a little different. <laughs> just, a, just a bit. Just a bit. But, yeah, it's it's one of those things, like, until you have the vision of going, all right, what are we trying to do? What are mm -hmm. we trying to prevent? Yep. Then it's then you see all the details of what people touch and how things oh, get yeah. moved and how much cross-contamination <laughs> happens, and it's like, dang. Yeah, it's it's insane. I I think when we uh, when we reopened, I was like, "Pretend you have raw chicken all over your hands. Whatever you touched, you need to clean." <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah, because like I'm never more aware of germs on my hand than I am like when I'm handling raw chicken. And I'm just like, <laughs> "Don't touch me." <laughs> Salmonella. <laughs> yeah, don't touch me. I'm Salmonella. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, the, the funny part, too, with, with uh, him not getting anywhere for his shop to open was we ended up going to do construction on our shops at the same time. Like, we just couldn't find anywhere. And he's like, oh, I, I got a place. I said, that's awesome. When you get in there? And I already had been going into my place January 1st. And he goes, January 1st. And I'm like, sick. That's going to be so great. We're going to be so excited. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking he's stressful at all. <laughs> and it um, actually, surprisingly, was not that bad. I was I was shocked. There was only, like, I think one argument. And it was, like, very quick. And I was like, damn. Nice. So I am curious, and I I don't know why, I just spaced with other people talking about this, but um, what's your experience been personally, like, in the barber side of the industry as a female? Like, Mm, that's such a... uh, uh, I I I want to touch on the subject. No, uh, no, I do. I like that question, though. I do, but it's it's funny because that's always... I feel like that's... I got asked, I did another podcast and they asked me that too. Yeah. But it is, it's a great question. It's um, interesting. I find, I tr- so I try not to jump to like, it's because I'm a woman. Like I try not to go to that with certain situations. It's not your first card, but it's in the deck. It's, yeah, it's on the table for sure. But um, I definitely feel like I have to try sometimes a little harder. Which I'm like, and it's it's not something I want to complain about. It's just like a fact of life. Like sometimes with a male-driven industry, there you know, guys doing something is going to be accepted easier. But um, there's definitely like pros to it for oh, yeah. sure. Like if I tell a guy that he should switch his haircut to something, like he's going to listen to me more. <laughs> he's like, oh, well, you're a woman. I want to attract women, so let's do this. Um, and I find that I can, I don't know, I think I, I, commu- I create more of a connection with people. I don't know if that, I don't, I don't think that has anything to do with it, though. I, I, I think that that is inherently a female trait, though, yeah. is our ability to connect with people. Yeah, like it's not because I'm a woman, but like because I'm a woman, I am yes, that's just a little more adept at that. Like, yeah. Yeah, I would say that. And being like, I think like an empath too, like huge helps so huge. much. Because I'm so big on vibes, like in the shop. If someone's not having a good time, I don't want to know. I'm over there. I'm looking. What are you guys talking about? Let's talk about something different. Like for real. Like as soon as somebody comes in, you can tell like you are not your normal self. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I and it, um, I mean not to get too far too far off your question, but like I'm big on um, you know, leave your Leave your problems at the door when it comes to your clients. But if you're going through a hard time, share with me or your coworkers or something. You know what I mean? Like, don't, like, put that on your clients who come here to have a good time. Yeah. Unless, like, maybe you have that relationship, but, like, not, like, everybody has that. But, um, but yeah, I think it's – the. I think the funniest part about the, the female barber aspect is guys are way less likely to get a beard trim from me. And initially i do yes. such a good beer trim <laughs> i had a guy walk in and he's like oh i'd like to get a beer trim like you know uh preferably like you know someone that has a beard and i was like okay <laughs> and it's i was like biting it all back like oh so just not me is it is it me is that am i the problem um so i booked him with someone and the guy i told the guy who i booked i was like yeah he wanted a someone with a beard so that's you and he's like, that's hilarious. You've given me the best beer trim I've ever had. And I was like, I know. That's his loss. <laughs> it's it's like that whole, you know, there are two barbers in town. One has a good haircut and the yep. other has a bad haircut. Which yep. one do you go to? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very much like, hey, you see all these guys that work here that have beards? And they have really, really good trimmed beards? Yeah. Guess who did that? I got no beard. <laughs> I was talking about starting a, I think, I don't think I'll do it, but it would be funny to start a beard oil company. Because I'm very, I'm very product particular. Like I rip apart things, and um, I was like, so I'm like, that's you know obviously a good trait to have if you want to start a company of products. But uh, I was like, how hilarious would that be? <laughs> Just like a woman started a beard oil company, like no beard, you know? Oh, you have you have beard oil? Yeah. yeah that's awesome. <laughs> okay, well that's great. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, aftershave, pre-shaven beard oil. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I think that's hilarious. Oh, like in the in like a good way. Like it's just like it's change. I think it'll you know it changes people's way of thinking about stuff. Well, the way I've I mean I I feel like it's as much a visual difference as it is like general like gender situation where even if you put us beside each other yeah for the listeners listening hannah has long hair (laughs) (laughs) and i have a fade (laughs) so putting even just us beside each other yeah and comfort level someone is more likely to have just a little bit more comfort with me because i am sporting the the haircut they're more comfortable wearing themselves yeah, absolutely uh so they automatically go that means you must have more experience in this environment absolutely. and it's just that you know mental generalization and they may be right they may be wrong yeah because it'd be like you you gotta get your haircut in a barbershop and yeah. you go she could get her haircut in a barbershop too yeah, <laughs> any, yeah anyone could um so there's there's that so i feel like i've kind of adapted i mean i've had short hair for 15 years so long before i entered mm. the the barbering industry yeah um but i think that puts the the more sensitive guys at ease yeah yeah i think i mean i don't get a ton of new clients so i don't really experience the uncomfortability anymore but when i when i when i did it's there I, yeah I, hey i'm an empath i feel it i know <laughs> But uh, I think the con- the, with the consultation, you would see it dissipate. Oh, yeah. Like, I've put a lot of work in having a very in-depth consultation. Nothing stresses me out more than to hear barbers halfway through a haircut asking questions about the haircut. Right. <laughs> I've heard it, and I'm like, oh, you should love right now. <laughs> like, they're, like, mid-hair, they're like, you got on skin, right? And I was like, oh, man, oh, boy. Like it's, I, me personally, it's very stressful, so I don't want to do that. But um, why are you talking about the top of their haircut ten minutes in? You already cut half of it. You can't go back now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and I and I want to instill, you know, like with the the girl I just hired, it's like I want to instill this onto you because that's it's just gonna make your life easier in general. Like people are gonna be more comfortable. They're gonna see, you know, and and want to come back to someone who's really in, in depth with stuff. I mean, I just got um, a haircut recently, and the girl, it was like a five-minute converse, like conversation to start. I've never really had that. No. But I noted it. I was just like, hey, this is awesome. <laughs> well, and I feel like you're not, you're not doing your job justice unless you're, unless you're really, really good at envisioning. Yeah. And, you know, seeing what they had, and they want what they had before, where it's yeah. like, and you're just rattling off. So I see that, you know, last time you had it, you know, nice and tight at the sides, probably yeah. like a medium fade. And you want enough to mess with on top and throw some product in if yeah. you feel like it, but not necessarily have to. Yeah. And, you know, if you're that good and you can like spout that off and they're like, yeah, yeah. that's like what? exactly <laughs> what I want. Yeah. Yeah. And awesome. you see, you see that guess, Let's that go. guessing on the, f- it's gone. Yeah. And, in a and second. they immediately feel confident in you. Cause they're like, yeah. dude, this is the first time I've sat in your chair. Like, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and I've I've done that. I it's like I don't get a lot of new clients anymore, but I do look forward to the new client. Like I look forward to that because I don't have it anymore. But then I think like those details, like do you style your hair, is like one of the first questions. And I keep it very simple. Like it's yes or no. We don't need to get into details. Yes or no. Do you style your hair? And they're like, well, no, but I could. Do you want? Do you want to? Or not? Do you want the option? Don't tell me you're gonna get into <laughs> styling your hair and go home and not style your hair. I'm not gonna give you a slick back if you're just gonna like go home and like look like shit yes <laughs> like, i don't want that you know and it's like it's and it's i think everyone always thinks you're gonna judge them when they're like no i don't put on my hair it's like no it's fine man i get it you don't want to style your hair it's fine just like tell me so i don't give you something that you need to style although i do want to get something embroidered that says i don't have five minutes isn't a good excuse not to style your hair <laughs> <laughs> i want it like cross stitched in something and like hung by my station because i hate that excuse if you don't want to style your hair don't style your hair, but don't tell me five. You don't have five minutes in the morning because that's just ridiculous. And it really like, unless you're doing something that requires some like comb action. Yeah, it's not gonna take you five minutes. Thirty seconds. And even if you are using a comb, yeah, you probably shouldn't be taking five minutes. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. But My like, number one worst suggested ca- for people. Worst case, five minutes is all you have to do. Like, worst case. Come on. Like, come on. You got it. <laughs> well, and I think of the majority of the cuts that I give people, I'm like, like two minutes. And if you're taking that long, yeah. you need to step back from that mirror, sir. <laughs> yeah. Take two steps back. You yeah. should not be that close. Nobody's yeah. going to look at you that close. And exactly. if they are, they better be kissing yeah. you. And I'm like, and I have guys, like, I, I always say, like, I don't, I don't give you a haircut that needs to be blow dried or needs to be styled. But if you come to me and show me this picture, I'm going to emphasize you're going to need to blow dry and style that. And I like, I think that blow drying your hair is great. It definitely takes your styling up a notch, but like, you don't have to do that. No one has to do that. Your hair is just going to look a lot better and more voluminous. If you do that. Like 95% of my customers, I just automatically was like, I'm never going to introduce you to a blow dryer. Well, in, in <laughs> like your area too. Like I, if I was working up here, I would never even dream yeah. of that too. No. But like, I've got, you know, some guys that go down and work in Boston and they have to put on a suit and you know, they got flow, you know? So let's do something with it. Like let's do something really cool. But, um, yeah, the, the styling and, st- you know, do you style your hair? No. Cool. All right. You're going to get something probably pretty short and pretty easy. Like, that's like knocks out 90% of the haircuts that I would give you. But I'm always like, I'm trying to create a balance because I got, you know, the majority of people are like, they want a wash and wear haircut. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, cool. No problem. Easy. Low maintenance wash and wear. But... You have a girlfriend, right? Mm -hmm. Which means you want to have the option to style it if necessary. So true. (laughs) I uh, was just talking about this today. This guy. (laughs) He is an interesting individual. (laughs) Like, he would probably be pretty offensive to some. Not that he says generally offensive things, but it can be... uh, Taken the if wrong I way. was a lesser woman, I would be very offended. By I collect those and I customers say lesser too. Either, but if I was a more sensitive woman, I would probably be very offended. I have a few of those customers. Yeah, too. I think we collect them. Yeah, absolutely, because we can put up with their shit. Yes, yes. <laughs> but um, he will not. He has beard oil. He has pomade. He will. He will put pomade in because he's got like he's he's got the kind of you know it's going back. You need a little something. Um, but he will not put beard oil in <laughs> and he was in the shop. I think it was last week. And he's like, my beard's itchy. And I was like, yeah, Barry, you know what helps with that? Beard oil, beard oil, Barry. <laughs> and he's laughing. Like he's having, like, we're all having a good time. But like, I like, <laughs> I went in so hard on him and, um, he's like, oh, that's frou-frou stuff. I can't, I can't do that, Hannah. And I was just like, Barry, knock it off. Like, put the beard oil in. And then he, like, later on, shows us this photo of his wife. And she's, like, smoking hot. Like, I, like I've never seen her. I think I maybe maybe once. I, I, I can't remember if I've seen her. But, like, hot wife. I was like, Barry, you're punching, okay? Put some beard oil in for your hot wife, please. Like, she just wants you to put in beard oil. Because he's telling us, like, well, she wants me to put in beard oil. But I don't want to do this. It's frou-frou. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> just put it in, dude. <laughs> Your hot wife wants you to put beard oil in. Why would you not put beard oil in? He's like, I know, you're right. I'm like, I know, I know I'm right. <laughs> you break it down and go, Barry, you love your wife, right? Yeah. Do you love your wife? Do you love getting kisses from your wife, Barry? This is this is how you're gonna show your love. So yeah, you get more kisses, less stares, Barry. Just <laughs> then she won't yep. complain about, you know, your 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 face dandruff like on your t shirt. <laughs> That's so funny. And it's so funny, like sometimes with these guys, I'm like, it's so simple. It does. It is so simple, man. <laughs> Watch this. One, two, three. Yeah. Done. But um. <laughs> but yeah, I mean the consultation. That's that's so so huge. And like the, the little details, like getting ear hair out of someone's ear. Mm-hmm. I ask. I do ask. Some people like to keep it. I don't know. That's that's your creed, man. But um, trimming their eyebrows, like tapering down the side, like those tiny little things. I swear is what I, that's why I have half my clientele because I, they didn't have to remember to tell me. 
And like the amount of people that are like, oh, my, my wife will pay so much. She's always chasing me around the house. I'm like, yeah, now I can trim it and you don't have to have your eyebrow hair plucked out. Your life gets better too, man. I always tell people, I go, it's a safety hazard. Number one, it's not going to poke you in the eye. Number mm-hmm. two, you're not going to get attacked by tweezers. You will get way more um, rain in your eye, according to one of my friends. <laughs> no, don't touch it. Keeps the rain out of my eyes. <laughs> like umbrellas do that too but <laughs> uh yeah it's just like little things like that i feel like is so important i guess really when you break it down like that's barbering like that cutting with precision you know and that's it's it's funny because I'm, I'm like going through all that with this this new girl because she's she's cosmo based and it's cool because i've been there with all this stuff so i've learned all this stuff so i can be like oh this is you know this was a big aha moment for me like when i switched over and you could speak both languages kind of thing yeah yeah and i like i think it's cool not having like she's got really cool sheer work too like she's very very adept in that because nice. i think that's one thing i i'm very particular on is like sheer work like angling of like shears and stuff like i see people that like texture cut but like the shears are like down here and you're still just making all these like blunt cuts and i'm like oh god like very very into like the texture cutting like that well and i've uh talked with this uh with one of my other guests where when we're looking for further education Mm -hmm. uh from a barber standpoint since we want something new yeah we have to reach to the cosmetology yeah oh yeah yeah and and cosmetologists like if you see like barber oriented classes like that's actually way better for cosmetologists who are not familiar with like how to perform a face. Yeah. You go, why would we go to classes that we already know? Yeah. And unfortunately when it comes to products, like, uh, you know, we carry uppercut, we've got prospectors, you know, any product line that offers education. If you're offering barbering education, that doesn't make any sense because your barbers are already your customers. You need to offer something they don't already have. Mm-hmm. Especially when it comes to being able to style with your product. And I don't know why that's not being hit right now. Like, that's why I don't, like, I don't send my barbers to education, um, you know, from product lines at this point. Mm -hmm. Because it's the, why? You're not going to learn anything new. Yep. Yeah. I, um, I think it's because it's not being run by barbers. It's being run by people who sell pomades or products, not pomades, but like products, you know, I mean, it's. It's they're not getting that point of view. Who's sending this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I think one thing that drives me nuts, uh, product lines that don't just automatically send you samples of new product when they produce it. I haven't had too much of a problem with that. Oh my god! I'm All the ones that I carry have been more than happy to send me something new that they have yeah. developing and want my feedback, which yeah. is nice. Yeah, right. Why wouldn't you? That just makes sense. It's just like to me, it's just like the most natural thing. I'm about to like drop a line because of it. Like, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's just so. I'm just like, why? Why do I have to spend money on this for me to potentially not like it? Because for me, if I don't like something. I'm not gonna sell it, so I'm not gonna order it. You oh. know, if, if someone in the shop likes it and I don't like it, that's one thing. But like, if my entire shop doesn't like something, why would I care about it? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, so it's like, all right, so now I have to invest in this to not like it. And I just, like, drives me up a wall. I do have one company that I have a wholesale account with, but the only reason I opened the wholesale account with them, and I told the guy straight up, I was like, look, I'm going to give you an initial order, and if I don't like it or if it doesn't fly off my shelf, like, you might not ever hear from me again. Yeah. And I will say that I don't don't know when I contacted him initially Mm -hmm. for that, but... I think I have one more thing from that initial order. Yep. And it's been over a year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, their particular stuff that they sell keeps. Yeah. Like, it's not like a pomade where it's going to expire in a year. Right. But yeah. it's like, is it good enough for me to bother reordering? And like, no, not talking year, to somebody yeah. like for the first time, like that yeah. product rep could have been fired or gone on to a different company yeah. by now. I have to start a new relationship. Yeah. Eh. I don't know. Yeah, and it, and it, another th- you know another thing was like barber brands. This is so having cosmetology background. This is can be a very frustrating point. Is like I don't want to have a million lines, right? I don't want to have like twenty seven lines, but 
I need something that has a clarifying shampoo and a hairspray and stuff like that that isn't typically found in a barber line, but my clients want. And like you've got like your deep cleanse shampoos, and those are great. They're going to get out of grease pomade. They're not going to get chlorine out of the hair. Yep. You know, or they're not going to get out a mineral buildup from somebody's hard water system in their house. So it's like, do I just, I have to now carry this random shampoo in this random like hairspray from this company that's geared towards women. So their marketing towards men is obviously like, I have to like really sell this. <laughs> You're like, hey, you need this. So like, don't worry about what the bottle looks like. I know it's purple, but. <laughs> yeah. I just, one, I love IGK hair products. Like I use them on myself all the time. I went in for like a dry shampoo once and basically just took everything off the shelf and like put it in this basket. I was like, Hi, like <laughs> I'm such a sucker. But they have a moisturizing, moisturizing stuff. You know, you don't see that. It's another one. That's uh, it's a shampoo and conditioner. It's called, um, I think it's called Thirsty Girl. <laughs> so I was like, I think another one's called Sexy Girl, and I was like, God damn it! Like I can't. Like I love this product. I would love to sell it, but I was like, I'm not gonna put that in my barber shop. That's ridiculous. Yes. Like, <laughs> I will say as like, we just started offering a variety of shampoos Yeah, and I do carry probably half a dozen, maybe a little, maybe a little more than a half a dozen, uh, different product lines. Yeah. Uh, but that's because I'm a firm believer and nobody's perfect at everything. Yeah. Um, so I like variety. Yeah. Um, and I really don't like single brand loyalty. Yeah, no. Because it, it makes you very limited. It limits yourself to, you know, ex, ex, experiencing only what that line has to offer. Yeah, I, I think if you if you want to get, like, sponsored, that's a great avenue. I think it's, like, whatever way you want to go, which I don't want to be sponsored. That's not, like, not that there's anything wrong Nobody's with that. ever offered to sponsor me, so I'm like, whatever. <laughs> I'd sponsor I do what I you if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to be sponsored, if you want to, that's the route you want to go. Like, that's that's awesome, but I, you know, I agree. Like, I, I have, what are Three? I have three. I have a whole like shave line. I have one that's more, that's like the larger line that's like pomades, shampoos, and stuff. And then I've got like obviously like the holy black with the texture powder and stuff. I like love that texture powder so much. They've come a long way since I first found them on Etsy. I, yeah, <laughs> right? That whole vampire hunter kit. I didn't even have time to consider buying that. Right? Three minutes. Like, I think I got it. I was like cashing out at a grocery store. I like, pulled it up cat and i'm like you know i have to pay the cashier <laughs> got outside and i was like jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> that thing was cool as hell but yeah i will say that when it comes to shampoos it is all right kind of had to do a little bit of research and it's like all mm -hmm. right so like i carry some pulp riot stuff because obviously being a color line they're like yeah we need some of these things like yeah. we need a clarifying we need yeah. a toning but i'm still working on convincing people that you need a conditioner with your shampoo oh my god and was that I, for women i will <laughs> say that um there is one product line in particular that uh i basically told their rep i go when you can tell me why you have a shampoo that is a clarifying shampoo supposedly and you don't have a conditioner to go with it like that's doing some serious work on that hair and you yeah. don't have something to balance it back out when you can come back to me and justify that, then maybe we'll talk. Or a moisturizing shampoo and not a moisturizing conditioner, but because it's a moisturizing shampoo. Then it can be a two-in-one. Yeah, even though we're still stripping the body oil or the natural oils from the hair that act as a conditioner, we have nothing to put back in it. Yeah. Or, you know, the fact that pH is a thing and we need to balance the yeah. pH of hair and skin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we talking about the same brand? I don't know. Are we? Did we give with a J? I don't yeah. think we are. No. Yeah. No, mine's way more like you should be familiar with it from your school. They've changed. They They've have? Changed. Yeah, have, yeah. They've changed brands. We um we were able to use whatever we wanted when I was there. Nice. I don't know what they're doing anymore though. Well I just talked to Annie. The the, the Mitch Sitch. Uh oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh try so <laughs> I was waiting on one of my product orders and I tried the Mitch. Yeah, and I left it at the salon that I was at. It was just like it was. A, it was not an uphold for me. It was very good for being. I found it was very good to, for being a um, like a cosmetology 
like brand. Like if I was, if I was, if I hadn't, well, the second I went to barbering, my pomade like, world was like, <laughs> the door was kicked open. I was like, oh my God. Um, so, you know, the stuff that I was using for, it's just very like, it's very basic. Hmm. You know what I mean? It's going to hold your hair, but it's like, it's going to stop there. Like, <laughs> yep. But yeah, their shampoo part of that line was like, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Like you're cutting your sales in half, number one. Yeah. Like that just doesn't make any business sense. Yeah. Yeah. If people, we sell, I mean, we have daily conditioner, we have daily shampoo. We sell, I mean, it's just usually one does not get sold without the other. Usually when people are like, oh, I got to get shampoo. I'm like, you need conditioner? Yeah. Do you? I, I'm, <laughs> I'm still working on that. Yep. It's a losing battle. It's one of those, like you have conditioner in your back stock. Yeah. And you're like, gee, I need to order more shampoo. Oh. <laughs> And I'm, I'm, just, I'm a huge product nerd, though. So I think that's why I, like, rip stuff apart, too. Like, I'm oh, yeah. Very, I'm so picky. I'm, I'm that, like, look at the ingredients person. Yeah. I think that might be a uh, area thing, though, really. Because I think, if, like, if you're a product nerd, you're ripping, you're uh, breaking down the science of, like, why you need this, and they're still not budging. Like, it's those stubborn Lac- Laconians. I don't <laughs> I found out through an, uh, some article that Merrimack's called Merrimack and Cheese, and I want to leave the town <laughs> because of it. I did not know that. And I'm like, I got to get out of here. <laughs> I can't be here anymore. The only uh, nickname I know of in those parts is Manch Vegas. Manch Vegas, yeah. Trashua. For See, anyone living in Nashua, I did not, uh, <laughs> I did not make that name up. <laughs> I've literally only been to Nashua once. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, Merrimack and cheese. Awesome. All right. Well, on <laughs> that note, <laughs> thank you so much for coming and talking to me for like two hours. <laughs> thank you for having me. Well, uh, I'll keep an eye on how Union Barber goes. Uh, thank you. Moving forward, I'm definitely, uh, hopefully you guys have the space to be able to add like another one or two chairs. You angled something in there. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I'll definitely want to check back and maybe – revisit you in a couple of years and be like so how are things <laughs> oh, yeah. absolutely all right have a safe trip back thank you mm-hmm.